This is Darren Williams, the man said to be the next John Stockton. So why is he in a boxing ring? How did an all-star point guard in the franchise's future end up being Utah's most hated player? Watch it all unfold as we go into what actually happened to Darren Williams' NBA career. From an early age, Darren Michael Williams showed impressive athletic potential, winning two state wrestling championships, but he later developed a love for basketball, playing for the Colony High School team, standing at 6'3 and averaging 17.6 points, 8.5 assists, and 6.1 rebounds. The four-star recruit led his team to the state semifinals. He played college ball for the University of Illinois, where he earned the Athlete of the Year award after leading them to the Final Four and was dubbed MVP of the team by his coach Bruce Weber. Darren's leadership and ability to run the floor was why the Utah Jazz selected him as the third overall pick in the 2005 NBA Draft over his eventual rival Chris Paul. Ever since then, fans in the media often debated who was the better player between the two point guards. But even though Williams was expected to be the on-court leader, coach Jerry Sloan refused to put him in the starting lineup. This visibly frustrated Williams, which gave the coach even more reason not to play him. When he realized that complaining wouldn't solve his problems, he will shut his mouth and just played hard, which eventually got him the starting spot and an all-rookie team selection after averaging 10.8 points and 4.5 assists. The very next year, he led the team to a 12-1 record in their first 13 games, the best in franchise history. He broke out that season, averaging 16.2 points and 9.3 assists as they won 51 games, winning the Northwest Division title and ending Utah's three-year playoff drought. After clawing their way to the Western Conference Finals, they fell short against the San Antonio Spurs, led by Tim Duncan, who went on to win the championship. Still, Williams' outstanding performance earned praise from everyone, including the opposing team, especially because no one expected the Jazz to improve as quickly as they did. The impressive playoff run had everyone making comparisons between him and Utah Jazz legend John Stockton, while his rival was still stuck with the New Orleans Hornets. He flourished under the system created by the legendary coach Jerry Sloan, averaging double-double figures for three consecutive seasons straight, making 212 assists in just one month, becoming the second active player to have the most 20 assist games. Despite this, he was snubbed for the All-Star Game selection several times, motivating him to participate in the NBA Skills Challenge, which he won. Nobody has ever performed a better single run through the obstacle course than him. As a member of the Utah Jazz in 2008, Williams set the event record by finishing in 25.5 seconds. In the playoffs, he was the Jazz's leading scorer, and his consistent play made him the first player in NBA history to have 20 points and 10 assists in five consecutive games of a playoff series. A big part of his success came down to perfecting the pick-and-roll game he had with Carlos Boozer. D. Will already had the skills and experience to run the play effectively, but it also didn't hurt to be coached by Jerry Sloan, the man who revolutionized the pick-and-roll. The main plays were designed to create space for D. Will to either attack the basket or pull up from mid-range. Because of his speed and strength of their big men, guards were often tripping over themselves just to catch up. Some teams made sure that D. Will was never left unguarded by switching the screen but even a split-second miscommunication was enough for him to locate the roll man, leaving the defender one step behind for a wide-open dunk. Whenever he attacked the basket off the screen and saw the help defense sagging off their man, a quick pass to the cutter was almost a guaranteed two points. To mix up their playbook, the Utah Jazz also ran a pick-and-pop, where they started with pistol action near the three-point line, drawing the two defenders, which gives the shooter all the space he needs when D. Will catches this defender sagging off his man. His patience and core vision also allowed him to take his time on the drive and locate open shooters, like what he did on this kick-out pass. But even after becoming the team's leader, it was still Coach Sloan that called the shots, which often caused heated conflicts between the two, especially because Williams was, in his own words. I was definitely a little shit at times, a little, little prima donna, and so... Despite that, the two worked well, at least inside the court. But on February 9, 2011, in their game against the Chicago Bulls, their relationship fully collapsed. Darren ignored a play that Coach Sloan instructed and called for a different play instead, and it worked, giving them two points in the possession. So no big deal, right? Wrong. This single play led to Darren Williams and Jerry Sloan arguing in the locker room during halftime, which was so intense that those who witnessed it were afraid it would get violent. What was truly said during that break depends on who you ask, but what everyone agrees on is what happened after. The Jazz went on to lose the game when Williams and Sloan refused to communicate for the whole second half. After a post-game meeting with the management, the legendary coach, which created two generations of competitive Utah Jazz teams, announced his resignation that same night. D. Will received criticism from the media and was berated by Jazz fans, as everyone blamed him for the coach's retirement. 
Shortly after, Williams was shocked by the news of him being traded to the New Jersey Nets for Derek Favors, two first-round picks, and some cash. Just listen to his reaction. And it was like breaking news, Darren Williams traded to the Nets. And this is the first time I'd even heard my name mentioned in the trade. And in his first season there, he averaged a double-double yet again. But the Nets were far from a competing team, which changed when the NBA returned from the 2011 lockout. The Nets had completely moved to Brooklyn with the team adopting a win-now mentality. And after dropping a ridiculous 57 points against the Charlotte Bobcats, the Nets were convinced that building around D-Will was the right move. They signed Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, Joe Johnson, and Brooke Lopez to form a super team with Darren Williams. On paper, they looked capable of going head-to-head -head against the Miami Heat super team, but because of injuries to their key players and having a first-time coach in Jason Kidd, the reality was rather disappointing when they didn't even get past the second round of the playoffs. After leaving Brooklyn, Paul Pierce revealed the Nets' disappointing work ethic and mentioned Darren Williams' unwillingness to take charge. Meanwhile, Darren Williams' excuse for their failure was his nagging wrist and ankle injuries along with Brooklyn's inconsistent and frequently changing coaching staff. But after putting up numbers comparable to a role player instead of stepping up to become the superstar that carries the team, the Brooklyn Nets waved Darren Williams. The pressure and criticism simply proved too much and made him lose interest in the game. But the buyout arrangement with the Dallas Mavericks was exactly the fresh start he felt he needed. Here's what he had to say about it. And ended up going to Dallas back home and kind of found that love for the game again. He played in Dallas for two seasons, putting up respectable numbers off the bench, but was waived again because of the injuries that plagued him. The last team he played for was the Cleveland Cavaliers, wherein his only highlight was how Golden State Warriors' eyes lit up whenever he entered the court during the 2017 NBA Finals. In the past, opponents feared D. Will stepping on the court, but that time, it was the complete opposite. That's how you know how far you've fallen. And after losing that championship, he retired early at age 32. During his 12 years in the league, Darren Williams averaged 16.3 points, 3.1 rebounds, and 8.1 assists, and currently holds the 22nd rank in the all-time assist leaders with 6,819 in total. For a brief moment in his prime, he was considered to be the best point guard in the league, becoming a three-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA, two-time Olympic gold medalist, and was on his way to having a Hall of Fame career. But the pressure, injuries, and his own ego ultimately led him to his downfall. It makes you wonder what his career would have been if circumstances were different. Even though he never won a championship, he got a ring after establishing the Fortis Mixed Martial Arts School in Dallas, Texas. He now spends time living his childhood dream of training and mentoring students in MMA and boxing. He even fought Frank Gore in the Amali Arena as an undercard for the Jake Paul vs. Tyrone Woodley matchup, winning the bout by split decision. But when asked if he'll do it again, here's what he had to say. It was fun. I'm glad I, I had a chance to get out here and do it. But like I thought coming into this, I'm one and done. Since leaving the NBA, he grew more mature. And in 2018, he finally squashed his beef with Jerry Sloan. When D. Will met his former coach, he eagerly apologized, admitting his fault and regretting his actions. Sloan wasn't quick to accept the apology, but eventually came around and agreed to put their past behind them. Williams is grateful that they did so before the coach's passing, as he feels that it's something that would have haunted him for the rest of his life. Looking back, the Utah Jazz would have been a different team if their star player didn't butt heads with their coach, leaving all of us to wonder about the countless what-ifs. But aside from Darren Williams, which player do you think had an ego that cost them their career? Let us know in the comments section below. Driving out the franchise's beloved coach was sure to make every Utah fan despise Darren Williams, but he's not the only one. Check out this video to see just who are the most hated villains in NBA history. I'll see you there.